Hey, check it out. We're back. Okay, I got a lot to talk to you guys about, and uh, it's all going to have to do with 3D printing this time. These motors are going to be available. Oh, they're not actually motors. Electric motors are motors. These are engines, and they're not actually engines because they're toys. All right, so I'm making 10th uh, scale, 8th scale, and gas scale in these uh, 3D printed engines available soon. They'll be available at Rattlesnake RC. And I wanted to talk to you about them a little bit. First off, let's talk about 3D printing in general. I don't know if you're familiar with how this works. Most people are anymore, but they're made uh, this style anyway, uh, extrusion printing with filament. There is a method of 3D printing that uses resin it's much, much slower, it's more expensive, it's much more wasteful, and uh, it does make nicer prints, but for all of those aforementioned reasons, I don't do it. The trick, the trick, the difficulty comes from how you're squirting this plastic out. When you're squirting it down on a flat surface, it works great. And there it is, and you squirt one layer and it cools and dries. And so then the next layer comes along and the nozzle is really hot and the filament comes out really hot and it kind of melts into that second layer. And now the two become one and then you just keep going and up and up you go through whatever fancy pattern to create your fancy thing. Uh, I say all that to get you to give me a, a little courtesy here. 3D printing is not a perfect process. You will always I don't know if you can see them. There will always be layer lines where you can tell where one layer got squirted out and then the next layer got squirted out and you can see it. And there's ways to minimize that if you use super fine resolution. In other words, you print out a super thin little layer and then another super thin little layer and keep going that way. It takes forever. Or you put, can squirt out a little bit thicker layer and another little bit thicker layer and you will see the lines a little bit more, but it prints it out in some reasonable speed. I'm printing a million of these. I've run through three rolls of filament already because I'm an idiot and I do this all for you. This, that make it a really good time for you to stop and go down there and click the like button and then subscribe to the channel. And by the way, there's a little bell symbol there. If you click that little bell symbol, you'll get notified every time I post new content, which should start happening more frequently now for other reasons. And also someone you don't know uh, across the country uh, will die. Um, not really, I'm kidding. YouTube, don't, don't disable my video. <clears throat> All right, so anyway, you're gonna give me a little bit of courtesy and one thing you're gonna see, uh, well, let me back up. I work really, really hard to find ways to set this in order that it, in the way that it prints up to make the best looking portion of the print the part that is visible when the model is assembled. By that I mean there are some areas where, in fact, let's talk about that right now. If I was going to print this thing, and I set it down on the ground on this edge here where I had it printing up from there. Okay? Maybe you can see it on this camera better. This is a long stretch for that nozzle to be basically printing in the air when you get on an upper portion of any item. See that little lip right there? I don't know if I'm pointing this the right way. When the nozzle goes to squirt that out, it'll come out and squirt out that edge, right? But it's squirting it out in the air and the filament will just sit there and sag and droop down and you'll wind up with just a gross looking mess. Looks like a whole bunch of really expensive uh, spaghetti. And so I need to print against something. So you program the printer to give you supports. Ah, hold on. Eight scale, turbo intake. Here's how it looks, right? This part goes against, you know, the cylinder. This is a tenth scale block, so that looks a little disproportionate. Okay, but that's the idea there. And you see how that looks really nice. Let me show this camera. Oh, super sexy. Uh, the backside of this item, in an area that you won't see when it's assembled, 
I don't know, can you see the, the roughness of this look? Try to show this camera right here. And a little bit along this edge too. That's because when this is printing, that portion, when that part first starts, see that space between these uh, intake runners here, that part is just in the dead air. And if the nozzle squirted it out, it would droop. So, I create supports. Supports look like, it's gone, oh, right here, this. This is the same thing, but with the supports all still in place. Why do I show you this? Two reasons. Number one is because you'll always find areas where the supports clearly were touching the print, okay? And you're gonna look at that and think, oh, that looks terrible. No, nah, it's really not bad, and it's in an area you're not gonna see. And if you don't like it, clean it up. You can, I don't know, can you see that rough area there? You can always take, what works really nice is a razor blade, and you can kind of scrape off the little high spots. And if you want, you can even sand it. Um, use a really rough sandpaper. Uh, this is plastic, so it'll tend to ball up in your sandpaper. You can use uh, something really aggressive like this, like an 80 grit. And you can sand it and smooth it all out. And if you'll stick around in this video, I'll show you another way, or at least tell you about another way that you can make these lines, these print lines in the various little spaggies, uh, almost completely disappear. Uh, that's coming later. Okay, so you've got supports like this. When I print these up, and before I send you these kits, all kinds of stuff, and this is just a fraction of it. Uh, I will remove these supports, I hope. I'm gonna miss some, I'm gonna forget some, and you may have to deal with it yourself. And the finishing work of sanding and all that kind of stuff, if you're really crazy anal, like, like I am really, um, you'll do a bunch of cleanup work on these if you'd like. Uh, certainly not mandatory, we're not gonna do that today. Uh, but this is just an example of what that looks like with those on. This is a little bit of extra that helps this stick to the surface I'm printing on. And the supports, if I leave them behind, it works like this. I don't know, did you see that? I almost didn't see it because a piece of plastic hit me in the eye. Come on, be nice to me. There we go. Bingo little bottom supports here. I gotta support this part because this is printing out in the dead air. Dead air, plain air, open air, open air, printing out in the open air. Now you're gonna see uh, sometimes there's little leftover bits on here. This is gonna be our mounting surface. We're gonna want this surface to be pretty flat so I can easily take these little edges off. Just by doing that number with a razor blade. Sooner or later, you'll cut yourself. I do it all the time. I'm gonna do a bunch of this work for you, but not all of it. And you go around and clean up any of those leftover bits. But now we have two super cool turbine tubes, turbine intakes. And on a much larger block, they'll get installed and look something super cool like that. All right, can you dig it? That's how supports and 3D printing works. I do my best for you, and I think these products will only improve over time. Uh, but right now, I have them pretty well refined. This one here, I am not going to sell to you or to anyone. This is printed out of a uh, kind of an oddball plastic, an oddball filament, and I don't really like the finish of it. It didn't turn out very well. Here's an example of some of the things I may leave behind. Can you see those little hairs there? That's a little leftover filament that sagged down. Uh, I have this print refined pretty well with another filament where this doesn't happen, but very minimal. Uh, but again, you can, you can really quickly and easily clean those out. And as I say, I'll, I'll run around and do a bunch of that for you. But, you know, look the thing over and see if you see any leftovers. And now, it looks pretty good, right? Okay, all the stuff you see up here and it's a little rough looking. Again, this just wasn't a very good print. I'm not happy with this filament, um, but that's the way it goes. Uh, so we're going to assemble this motor a little bit kind of, no, are we gonna use this one? No, 
I'm going to talk to you about this one. Okay, this video is supposed to be about how to assemble these things. Let's get on to it. Maybe I'll put a marker or something. You can just fast forward to here so you don't have to listen to all my garbage. Uh, this is the carbureted version of an Allison. You're going to have your valve covers. Okay. Carbureted version is easy to assemble. You can just simply mount the valve covers on. See this pointed edge? Pointed end? You probably know this. You've probably looked at a lot of pictures already. This is where your magnetos will mount. These go toward the blower housing. Where's the blower housing? Right here. It's printed separately because up in gas scale, this thing gets becomes huge and won't fit on the print bed. Plus, this way you can use this or not, depending upon what you're doing. Uh, it glues onto this end. Okay. Here's a here's a spot where you may want to sand just to make this sure this surface is flat. You can just very quickly buzz around it and see how flat it is. That's actually quite good. And do the same thing on your block, right? Good old CA. I'm a big fan of this stuff called Starbond. This is Starbond's flexible CA. By that, it is not like it's rubber. It's just not as insanely brittle as most CA, where you just go, bing, and you break it. Uh, this stuff gives you a little bit of give uh, is somewhat thick and uh, is just wonderful. Starbond. I buy it in a big, big old giant bottle. I mean, someday there's going to be an estate sale when I'm dead and gone. There's going to be a big bottle of this stuff. What is this crap? Let me see how viscous it is. <laughs> and the next guy, I'll have all his fingers stuck together. All right, you're going to start by gluing this on here. The flats line up, okay? So you can set it down, put your CA on there. Boom. Squirt a little bit of accelerator and it'll set right off. And that thing will never come off of there. Carburetor. Thick part is the bottom flange, although it really doesn't make a difference which way you put it on. You're just going to put a dab of CA on that and you're going to drop that guy on there. Bingo. Now again, your, your uh, magnetos are on the carburetor, the blower end. So you're going to want this part going this way. If you glue it on the wrong way, that's on you, my man. That's on you. Don't call me. So you're going to glue it on there this way. You're going to do them both. And you're going to glue your magnetos on right here. Okay? Are you with me? Then you're going to take your carb intake by the way, this is one of those things that you must print supports inside to keep this spot from sagging. And then I gotta dig those supports out. And there may be some left behind. Finish them up. Glue this guy on right here. And you got yourself a gas motor. Carbureted motor. <laughs> They're all gas. Engine! Oh! Oh, by the way. Cool. Big outlets. I love big outlets. I don't know. There's all different shapes and sizes, right? But I'm not going to create files for every possible style. This is what I've come up with. I like it. It looks much like most of them. Um, and stick that guy on there. And you're done, man. This engine is ready to rock and roll. Uh, nice thing about having separate pieces. I mean, I could always assemble them for you, I suppose. But then, you, then it's a pain to paint, you know. You can paint this thing with it apart, then glue it all together, and it would look fantastic. What else was I going to tell you? Paints. I just, man, I just go to the local hobby store and buy whatever. I think this is like acrylic stuff. It's actually a water base, but once you paint it on, it is permanent. I know that because it says so right here. Water-based multi-surface permanent on textile, metal, aluminum, plastic, and most any surface. This stuff is really wicked. It is. This, these are beautiful colors, but of course you're going to want to try to match what the original boat had. So paint it on. You can just brush it on and away you go. Uh, it works great. And it will actually fill a number of these little lines. Again, those print lines. Mm, I don't like them. Wish they 
wish it wasn't part of the game, but it is. Okay, so that's how you assemble the gas motor. Simple. Still going to tell you about how to make these lines go away, but hang in there. Um, I'm going to get that out of the way. We're going to assemble the turbo motor, all right? Just loosely. I'm not going to get real serious about it. Let me get the carbureted pieces out of the way. I'm going to use these valve covers, I think. Uh, turbo engine comes without the carbureted intake. That makes sense. By the way, you know what this is? I don't either. Uh, the real motors have it. Bell housing, probably. Keep it, cut it off with a Dremel tool, a bandsaw, I don't care. I just thought it was cool, so I added it to the motors. I really did overkill on the blocks, by the way. Uh, there's a bunch of shapes and lines and stuff, and you don't see any of it. By the time you put your exhaust on and your valve covers and your turbos and all that, you don't see any of it. So that was a complete waste of time. But isn't it cool? Uh, all right, so our turbo engine. The turbos can go either way. Some motors have the turbo in the front, some have them in the back. It really doesn't make a whole lot of difference on this motor because you're not going to know which is the front and the back anyway. Um, let's see, how do you want to go about it? Where do you want to start? Intakes? Valve covers. Okay, we do know that the valve... Where'd they go? Oh, right here. We do know that the valve covers, this tapered end, goes towards the magnetos, and the magnetos are on the end where the blower would attach. Of course, this one's going to have turbos, so it doesn't need the blower. Let's stick this on. Uh, again, I'm just going to just barely do this. Actually, this that much right there would probably make it so you could never remove this thing. It's really just that killer. Well, you know, I mean, if you use CA, you know what it's like. Now, am I going to just push on it and it's going to decide to hold? No. No problem. Just a glitch. I don't know if this will get underneath there. Not if I don't point it in the right direction. I feel it's still moving. Come on. Come on now, get on. Get on up under there now. I think that side's stuck. You know when you use a bunch of CA so it actually comes oozing out the end, you hit it with that, you're done. It, it won't go anywhere. I don't know if that's staying. I don't think it is. Maybe. Again, we're just kind of just zing zinging this one here. As if that was a thing. Just a little bit of overhang all the way around. It's all good. Valve covers do overhang, typically. A little, maybe. I don't know. I've done the best I can. Hope that gets under there. Oh, it still moves. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. You can use epoxy. Whatever you want to use. I don't care. Use double-sided tape. Would actually probably work just fine. I don't really know if that's kind of sort of, uh, maybe, maybe it's kind of sort of stuck. All right, so be it. Uh, oh, we should talk about our turbo exhausts. All right, by the way, you'll notice different materials. Um, I'm still, as I say, I'm, I'm working through different kinds of filaments. Uh, who knows what you're gonna get, uh, but it'll be fine. All right, so here's your, uh, your turbo exhaust manifold. Uh, I have settled on support right here and laying this part flat which I like. Uh, there's a little bit of... I think this is my uh, prototype that I actually had pre-assembled on another one before. I already made this sure this surface is flat. Just needs to be close. This is your pop-off valve. It's already installed because in order to get this to lay flat the way I designed it, I made these kind of large because that looks the way it should and that matters to me and that gets them in the way to lay this properly on the bed so to make it print right comes without the pop-off attached you'll get it this way uh, let's go ahead and put that one on there we'll get we'll get serious here I'll bet that'll just stay I hope it will because I don't want to mess with it please stay All right, 
Fine. Fine. Have it your way. Oh, you gonna stay now? Told you, don't mess with me. Okay, that's how you're gonna install your pop-offs. Blow-off valve, whatever you wanna call it. They go towards the magnetos. I would glue it on there right up against that bottom lip. Okay. Although you can higher or low it, whatever you want to do. Also on this, where it's just kind of just temporary. Well, it's not temporary. It's not going anywhere once it's on there. But uh, I'm just banging this one together. This one's not for sale. Well, I don't know. You want to you want to buy one that has been featured in the video but it's only loosely assembled and I guess you could buy it I'm going through all this just so I can show you how the turbos go together okay so you're gonna want to know even if you're bored right now you could always fast forward it or not hey watch the whole thing Although while the boring stuff's happening, go click like now. I don't think you've done that yet. I do this all for you. Believe me. <laughs> With all the time and money I've wasted on developing this stupid motor. See, look at that. A little bit of support right there that I forgot to remove. The supports come off easy, man. Sometimes they're kind of sort of stuck, but you'll get it. Okay, we've got our exhausts on there. I'm going to put our magnetos on now. Let's do that. Looks about right. Make sure these surfaces are good and flat. I didn't do that, but it looks close enough to for what we're doing here. And just our little fakey assembly. If you do a really nice job of getting the surfaces good and flat, the CA will do what it did here. CA actually uh, hardens in the absence of air. That's kind of why this stuff gets sprayed on it. It more or less, I, I believe anyway, that it really just kind of coats it, covers it. Absence of air, it sets. It's bizarre. So when you get two nice flat surfaces with CA in it, that's why when you mash your fingers together, because they are, you've pushed all the air out and it sets like right away. Okay, so that was easy, right? Now the turbos. Oh, hey, wait, let's put the, uh, let's put the inlet tubes on. That's that's sexy looking. See how this portion is rectangular? I made some steps on here. I do not know if you're going to be able to see those. It isn't mandatory that it line up perfectly. It just gives you kind of a reference. So when you're putting these on, where'd it go? Here we are. You can't see it right now, of course, but I can. And I'm going to kind of set it in the middle between those little marks all right is this flat no it is not where have you guys been by the way it's been months <laughs> i know it's all me it's all me it's all me i've been busy i've been doing this among other things I, man, I got a lot to show you guys, a lot to talk about, and the videos are going to start coming rocking and rolling here. We're going to build boats. I have shop news. And if I get my way, there's going to be some other cool stuff coming up. Okay, I like it. This one goes this way. Yes. Goes towards the turbos. Yes. stringy thingy there don't make these surfaces super flat why because then you'll stick it in there and that thing will it stick itself on so fast and you won't have it where you want it yet I got it where I want it I hope that gets under there somehow can you see that I just squirted a whole bunch on there just to try to encourage it to get up underneath oh this is so sketchy okay did I flatten that one yes I did you guys are so quiet you could chime in help a guy out I 
was afraid that wasn't going to come out for a second. I think I squirted toward it. All right, now this one, can't really see those lines as well. Don't care. I'm just getting it more or less the same depth as the other. Hope that went under there. It did. <laughs> oh, this is starting to look awesome. All right, now the turbos. Let's set that aside. Let's talk. Turbos, they come like this. Why? Because if I printed them assembled, uh, how am I going to explain this? Remember, something has to sit down on the print bed first, and then everything else gets printed up. And I could set it on the sides this way, or this way, or on the end of that tube this way. But no matter what I do, some portion of it requires support. So instead, I've sliced the uh, graphics in half, and I print them down flat, and then no support is required, and they wind up looking really nice. Okay, you're going to have two of the cold ends. Where'd they go? Where's the other piece? Really? What am I missing? That guy. Uh, cold end. Uh, intake. See the little, uh, look at that. Turbine fan is in there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, th this is the intake part, okay? Uh, cold end, um, so it's cooler. It's not going to be cold. It's going to be hot. This is your hot end. This part attaches to the exhaust, right? These are the ones that are a little bit tricky. Uh, these are both the same, by the way, because they are on, on the real motors, okay? So you're going to assemble two halves together. So these then are simple, right? You're just going to make two halves together. Uh, oh, let's do that now, and then we'll talk about the other ones. Oh, we should talk about the hole. See the hole? Because again, if your if your zap or your CA sets off super duper fast and you don't have this lined up, it's going to be ugly. Um, that was supposed to be toothpick sized, and I wound up with it slightly over. So I don't know. Carve a little piece of anything. Just make something that'll fit in there, right? It'll help you really quickly line it up. The heater's starting to cook me now. And it'll just really help you out. I'm always thinking of you. Oop, I saw it scoot. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, that's lined up. One down. Isn't this exciting? Two cold end turbos ready to go. Uh, see a little bit extra stuff hanging on. It's your job, clean it up. These guys, you're gonna find, can you see that? Broad flange, smaller flange. Okay, get it? Yeah, I know, you keep seeing that. That's where I stuck the exacto uh, into my finger. Okay, you want to mate one of each together. It can be done because these are reversed where you can stick two of the large flange together or the small flange guys together. And if you do that, don't call me. Not sending you single pieces. Not gonna do it. Small flange mates with a large flange. Same hole, piece of cake. Now look, if you totally shank it and you wind up with the two large flange ones together and two small flange ones together, it'll be fine, okay? It'll work and I'll show you why here in a minute. Stick around. But this is the way I intended it, okay? So we have a large flange one here and I'm gonna stick that small flange one up against it. Up again it. We're up again it now, and I'm going to do my best to quickly align a square end. How did the CA get all the way over here? And it's aligned 
quite well. Hopefully that gets up in there. I'll bet it did. It did. Hot end ready to go. Large flange. Small flange. Feeling pretty good about myself right now. All right, here we go. Oh, man. I'm glad that didn't set off quick. I don't know. Something about this star bond. It just behaves really, really well. Star bond. Flexible CA. Not brittle. Not going to do bad things. All right, we got a couple of them ready. Now you say, all right, stick them together. No. Oh, by the way, let's talk about large flange, small flange. Small flange meets this small flange. And again, we're going to do it with our piece of wood because that really helps us out because otherwise this squirt, squirts all over the place. But uh, the different full-size boats did different things with these, so uh, that's why I didn't build them attached. We're going to attach them. I'm going to show you how we do it right now. Let's bring this guy in. All right, now, as you are probably aware, by the way, if I glue this guy on here, see what I did wrong? Small flange. The small flange goes to the inside where the cold end goes. So this one goes to this side. I made holes on this too, and, and I had this dream that I was going to do that on here. And then I thought, well, no, I mean, if a guy can't make a square surface up against a square surface, then I, I can't help you. I got this one off a little bit. It's a little bit crooked. I'm just going to make sure that surface is flat. And just give it a nicer look, a nicer fit. Okay, that flattened it out real nicely. I'm going to install this part, okay? Making sure my large flange is out. We're going to hit that where it's nice and square. We're going to glue our fingers to it. And uh, I'll be just like a... I'm not going to say anything about protesters. I don't want to... Uh, again, why do we have to be afraid about things that we say? Why? Because YouTube will shut this off and you guys will never see it. First turbo's on. Let's make sure that's flat. Not bad. Large flanges to the outside. Okay, I haven't screwed anything up too badly yet. I kind of wish I'd held that with my other hand. There we go. I know my hands are in the way, or I have it completely out of the frame of the video. I apologize. Okay, those two turbos are on. Okay, cold end. Here's the trick. One of the tricks. <laughs> I keep saying that, don't I? Here's your tubes. Distinctly different. Short end goes against the intake. Large end comes down. Actually, this one goes over here. The reason being that there's two different shapes. This guy on this side, the outlet of it comes up and around the back. Can you see that at all? And so the slightly angled tube is going to go on this side. Okay? On this end, because this is the way the real boats are, I could have changed this. Some guys do in their models the tube comes up much closer to the intake and so you need a sharper elbow to line up here okay you may find that you need to shorten these or they may need to be longer depending upon how you've assembled your model I'm gonna say I need to shorten this one just slightly because I want that to stand up a little bit more. 
I know, just bear with me. This is really, to be honest, this is the very first time I have assembled one of these in its entirety in all of this madhouse printing I've been doing. Oh, that one, that one's, that one's beautiful. Might be just a touch long. I'm gonna knock just a tiny bit off of this and this bottom here, and I'll be right back. We're going to attach this upper surface first, right here. Now if I glue it on there, you don't know where you're gonna land. So you're gonna take a piece of shrink wrap. That's what I recommend anyway. You do whatever you want. I'm gonna put it over that. And I'm gonna put it over there. And I'm gonna point it in the right general direction. There's still a piece of plastic on there. That's gonna do two things. That's gonna give me some flexibility and it's gonna look really cool. It looks like a fitting that was meant to be there. Why? Because it was meant to be there. Heat that shrink wrap a little bit. Got a super cool mount. We're gonna do the same thing down here now. And we're gonna kinda make this assembly all come together all at once. Looks like I could have cut that a little bit shorter. You can still always grab your Dremel tool and buzz that off anytime you want. I don't know what, three eighths of an inch or so? Maybe that's half inch. Find with this size, it helps to flare it just a tiny bit. I'm gonna go on the turbo. We're gonna make sure it slides nicely on the tube. And it does. All right, let's make this happen. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna wind up gluing that piece of wood on there. I'm gonna put it on here first. Line it up with that piece of wood. I'm gonna give it a squeeze. I'm gonna go ahead and yank that guy out now. Oh man, this is really starting to work for me, man. We're on there. Mm. 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 Like I said, it, the truth of the matter is I'm crazy anal about this kind of stuff and I'd be taking a lot more time to get all these the same length and everything. This is one of those deals, the first one of these you build, you're gonna, it's just gonna look fantastic. And then at some point you're gonna blow your boat over and it's gonna fall to the bottom of the lake and you're gonna be like, dang it. And the next one you put together is gonna be assembled a little bit quicker. Like everything. See these pieces, I think I made them a little shorter than I would like. Come on now. So if I was doing it for real, I'd probably cut a little bit bigger one there, but I don't feel too bad about it. Do you? Okay. Heading down towards the turbo. Let's go ahead and attach that. A little bit of quick heat. Shrinks down real nice. Oh, my, I'm digging it. Let's go ahead and put this in now to make sure. Yeah, doesn't want to go. It's got so much CA set up on it now. You know what you do if this thing gets glued down in there? Nothing, don't worry. Why are you worried about that? Don't be ridiculous. Okay, I'm holding it in the right general area. I'm just gonna go ahead and heat that right now.
Ow. I recommend you move your finger first. Still fighting me. I'm gonna see it well enough. And it can't rotate now, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a really sexy looking Turbo Allison. Really took us minutes to assemble. You say, wait, there's something missing. Yes, there is. I love these, by the way. Oh, baby. Let's see. This one, uh, yeah, the turbos are in the back. We're going this way. You can line this up with a hole too if you want, but it can't. It doesn't come out this end, so you could permanently stick something in there if you really cared about trying to really hit that dead nuts. But do you see the difference why wide flange here and narrow flange over there? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. One of the cameras just ran out. Sure hope the other one's still working. It's probably this one. I think I've been out of the frame over here the whole time, so now I'm, we're using the phone. Huh? Huh? Can you see that? Hmm? Hmm? Talk to me now. Tell me how much you love it. Click like, give me a comment. Watch for these, allrc1.com. Wait, wait. I was gonna tell you how to completely eliminate some of these lines or just dang near completely eliminate some of these lines. What you would do now, or you could even do it before uh, uh, assembly with each individual piece, but if you'll take West Systems Epoxy, mix up, oh, you know, a full pump, if you're using the pump system, and then thin it ever so slightly with some alcohol, not like mm, alcohol, but uh, uh, rubbing alcohol, you know, that you get the hardware store or whatever, acetone will work. Uh, thin it a little bit so it's kind of runny and then I want you to grab a brush and slap it on everything as heavy as you possibly can just wear gloves right and you're gonna smear that stuff everywhere and then spend a minute and hold it one direction hold it another and let it drip off just let it run off the epoxy that remains and it will remain will sit in the low spots you know as it, you know what I'm what I was talking about there's uh, as as it prints you've got layers so you've kind of you can kind of see it high and low areas that, that wind up looking like lines a little bit of roughness in your in your print the epoxy will settle into those low points and run away from the high points thereby smoothing out the look and it will give it a cool gloss and it just looks fantastic i do that with all my drivers by the way when i when i uh, put one of my drivers together. You probably get my driver kits from uh, from Rattlesnake RC as well. And uh, do that next time. And you can do it before or after you paint it. If you do it before you paint it, no big deal. The paint will stick to the epoxy. Or if you paint it first and then throw that epoxy on, oh, deep gloss. But look at that. Tenth scale, ready to rock and roll. What do you think it weighs? Wait. There you have it. Full scale, by the way, and this is indeed scaled off of the actual Allison motor. Don Mock himself went and made these measurements for me so I get the scale correct. Uh, some people will say that it looks big. That's because all the other ones aren't scaled properly. This will look right on your boat. It's going to be so cool. All right. Coming soon. AllRC1.com. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. See you later.